Oh, hello everyone. Welcome back to the rationalinvestor.co's uh, ongoing tutorial series here with the good people at Coinigy introducing you to some of their site uh, tools and services they have to offer. Um, basically, my name is Brian Beamish. People call me Coach Brian. Um, I run a website called the rationalinvestor.co and as you've probably watched some of these tutorials in the past, um, I'm fairly comfortable and I really like working with the Coinergy platform. And so I'm here just uh, demonstrating how we use some of this stuff. So, um, you know, I've loaded the Coinergy site, coinergy.com. I'm going to click my sign in. I've already done this. So when you do sign in, uh, and you load up your charts, probably gonna look something along these lines. Uh, this is basically the default setting. You'll notice here in the symbol box, I've just gone in here and I've typed uh, BTC. Uh, and you can see on the Coinigy platform, they give you access to a number of different exchanges. So we're here on Bitfinex and I've just selected BTC. As you can see, if you wanted to say, look at Litecoin, well, there's Litecoin, nice and simple, right? So we're just going to click on BTC. And today we're going to concentrate on uh, the FIB tool because we don't really talk too much. A uh, little bit different um, a type of uh, analysis here in that uh, Fibonacci retracements are very powerful and very handy for professional traders to use. But a lot of new people to trading really don't get sort of a formal introduction to them. By all means, if you are interested, you can always pop on over to our site, therationalinvestor.com. And I have a bunch of free tutorials here. Uh, so if you do want to do some more reading on your own, um, I've put together a bunch of videos here on how to use FIBS uh, as well in my school. Uh, program we spend a couple weeks working on fibs but just to give you the general gist of what's going on here and how we're going to use this tool on trading uh, excuse me on um, on our trades day-to-day -day basis on coinage uh, what I've done like I said we load a bit Bitcoin chart here this is one hour I mean we can uh, it really doesn't matter what time frame you use uh, the important thing here is just getting their levels correctly and how you've drawn them so for the purposes of today, today, let's try that again. The, for the purposes of today's tutorial, we're going to minimize the volume. We don't really need to see that right now. We're going to go, like we said, on our drawing tools. We're going to select the third selection, which you see is a whole bunch of horizontal lines. If you actually go into this, you see that it's right down here. It says fib retracement. Um, I do in my school programs concentrate on a lot of these different tools. Um, so, but my advice to you is don't get too deep into these because a lot of these actually need very special uh, considerations when you're using them. We'll just concentrate on fibs today. And if there is demand, we can always do little tutorials on some of these other tools as well. Um, so we're going to click on fib retracement. You see in the box, it just shows you the little horizontal lines. And for the purposes of this, uh, today's tutorial here, we're going to measure uh, a retracement of this primary move down here. So we're going to start up at the top and we're just going to simply drag our FIB tool all the way down so that the lowest level, right, is off these lows. <coughs> so what should end up happening here, right, and this is an important part, so it, try and understand this and if you have to play the video back a couple times that's perfectly all right by me you'll notice that when i've drawn the tool down here the numbers that you see here get successful uh, successively higher as we go back and what this study is doing is we've drawn this primary move and the study is asking if the market rallies back, how much of this original move is the market going to take back? So you can see as the market bounced back to here, that was 23.6% of this original move. Market rallies back to this level right here, that's 38.2% of the move. 50%, uh, 61.8%, 76.4%, and of course, if the market made it all the way back right up top here, that would be 100% of the move. So, uh, 
couple things that I would mention about the FIB tool. I believe that a lot of these charting programs were written by programmers and not necessarily traders. Um, I've been actively uh, a broker and a uh, proprietary trader as well as a private investor for myself for more than 25 years. I can tell you with full confidence that this number, 76.4, is not relevant in the trading community. My recommendation to you is to go in. Uh, you saw that I left click on the FIB tool. All right, that highlighted it. Then I right click and I check format. My advice to you is to go in and literally change this 76.4 to 78.6.786. That's the appropriate FIB level. Uh, why the computer programmers have decided on 76.4 I believe really the answer is more out of convenience because 76.4 is a nice easy inverse relationship to 23.6, um, not as a level that uh, traders are interested in. All right. Now, <clears throat> for the purposes of my school and when I'm trading, I'm also not really that jazzed by the 23.6. Quite often it doesn't set up a trade level. So I often just take that out. Next, we need to understand that again, if we think about this as these tools are written by computer programmers and not traders themselves, we see that this 50% level here is on this study by default. 50% is not a Fibonacci level. No ifs, ands, or buts. It is simply not a Fibonacci level. For those that are interested in uh, understanding the relevance of the 50% rule, that is a GAN level, WD GAN, Mr. Dilbert GAN. I love his middle name. Anyway, uh, the point here is really if we were going to be doing a textbook FIB study, um, we really shouldn't have this 50% level on here. So let's get rid of it. All right. Now, this is the way that I use FIBs. All right. Is I learned a long time ago, and there's a gentleman out of New York who's a very popular floor trader, and he runs um, a, a service called uh, IDT, Intuitive Development for Traders. Uh, and in my class, if any of my students are watching this video, they'll probably hear it, uh, you know, at nauseum from me. But basically, the 38.2 fib is what I like to call the first stop target. And Mr. Burchett, Mr. IDT, he actually teaches that we really shouldn't even think about a trade until this 38.2 level is quote unquote resolved. If this is a down move, then quite often in a downtrend and it's going to continue lower, Often the 38 will be tested, market structure will come in, it will fail and continue on lower. If, however, this is some sort of serious bottom, right, the market will test 38.2, back off, and then move up through it. So, you know, hopefully you can take just from today's video, if you can apply 38.2, this will keep you out of a lot of trouble and it will keep you out of a lot of trading situations. And as you can clearly see, Mr. Burchett was proven right in that 38.2 actually represented a very significant swing level here, right? And now that the market has resolved bullishly, we can actually start looking for higher time frame setups and higher fib level setups. <coughs> All right, so first big thing, and I would recommend you do this, and this happens a lot. It doesn't matter what altcoin we're looking at, doesn't matter if it's Bitcoin, doesn't matter if it's gold, if it's stocks, if it's bonds, if it's currencies, 
38.2, our first stop target, is often an excellent barometer to tell us whether this is a trending market and it's going to continue lower or whether it's a ranging market and we're going to come up back up and test the highs. Conversely, well, not conversely, um, if 38.2 is resolved bullishly in this case, right, where are we most likely to find the market to go to next? And this is where we come up with the concept of the optimal trade entry zone, all right? Now, we need to understand, and I'll try and be as brief as I can through this video, institutions are in cryptocurrency land, they would call them whales, they do not buy up markets. They're not going to buy up here, all right? In fact, I teach in my school that if you worked on an institutional order desk or like a bank firm desk, a trading desk, and you bought a big up move like this, you could get fired. <laughs> you could literally lose your job. I mean, as you can see, this is horrible trade location, and oh boy, the firm would have lost a ton of money. Similarly, institutions or whales do not sell down markets, right? You know, exact same thing. If you were working on an institutional order desk and you got sucked into the FOMO or fear of missing out and uh, you were panicking like all the noobs, right, in, in trading land and you were dumping and saying Bitcoin's going to zero, you would have had your lunch handed to you. Right, and you probably would have also lost your job. Remember, the public buys at the top and they sell at the bottom. Institutions of the smart money always make money, they sell at the top and buy back at the bottom. Right, so if we understand that basic principle then our little FIB tool becomes really powerful because it basically highlights, right, if you can understand that this is nothing more than a trading range now, the OTE or optimal trade entry simply breaks the trading range down and says that if an institution was going to short, and remember, if they're going to short, they're going to short up markets, then they are probably going to generate some sort of rally into this zone. And what you also notice is, uh, I don't know whether we've done it on previous um, tutorials for you, but I'm a really big fan of the concept of market structure, where structure basically tells us where to buy and sell assets, right? We have a bearish market structure here, lots of M's, right, that are spitting up lots of sell signals. Hopefully what you'll notice is that the FIB study suggests that the optimal trade entry or where if institutions are going to short, where they're most likely going to short, is the 61.8 to 78.6 FIBs. Right? What a coincidence that also happens to line up off of a previous mar market structure failure level. Understanding that institutions do not sell down markets and institutions see this market structure and they want to be short from here. They will not panic and sell down here. They will just simply wait nice and patiently for the market to work its way back up into this zone to hit it again. As well, the good part about this range strategy and the concept of the optimal trade entry zone is hopefully you can see that if, uh, if you just simply approach the market that I'm going to consider this a range, right? And if I am going to uh, simply say that I'm going to try and short in this optimal trade entry zone, I'm going to risk to a break of the highs of the range. And my target is ultimately going to be a test of the low end of the range. Then what you see is by definition, we have a trade setup that generates more than a two to one. Uh, excuse me, two to one uh, reward over
over potential risk. We also need to understand that markets range 80% of the time and they only trend 20% of the time. So technically speaking, if you took the short here in the OTE range setup area, by definition, you're letting the market, you know, what it normally does work in your favor, right? 80% of the time, the market's going to come up against these highs, fail, and head back down, right? <laughs> All right. So hopefully what I've done here, and actually I went a little bit overboard, but in this video, hopefully what I've done is I've shown you how to draw a FIB study. I've also demonstrated the levels Fibonacci wise that I think are most relevant. We've talked a little bit about Mr. Burchette's uh, 38.2, what I like to call the first stop target and its relevance. And then we've talked next about the concept of the optimal trade entry zone and how these FIB numbers often line up with previous horizontal support and resistance and market structure failure levels. We finished off this tutorial today with just a simple concept of the range trader in that they like to find the optimal trade entry zone, hunt for some sort of failure. You know, in my previous videos, we talked a little bit about how I like to wait for three independent reasons to take a trade. Well, if the market rallied into the OTE zone, I would consider that one reason. Then maybe we get a momentum fail like you've seen off my previous tutorials, or maybe we get a candlestick failure, something along those lines. One, two, three, away we go. All right. Um, uh, all right, so I think that basically uh, does it for today's video. That's probably about 10, 15 minutes. Um, hopefully you have a pretty good understanding of how I use the FIB study. I think this is an excellent case uh, scenario here. And uh, in future studies, we'll talk about extension levels and what levels I like to hunt for for extensions and how you can use those. So everybody, have yourself a great day. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. All the best, and we'll talk to you guys real soon. Bye for now.